Hello, Key Stage 4, and welcome to today's session. This is going to be a masterclass on um, question five. Um, so we have been doing masterclasses around the extract, The Lovely Bones, and these sessions are aimed at you um, being able to independently revise and just pick and choose which questions you'd like to focus on. So the purpose of today's masterclass is to revise key skills and exam techniques for language paper one with a quick focus on question five. So Lovely Bones is the extract that we've been reading, which is the opening of a novel by Alice Sebold. The narrator is a teenage girl who's been murdered. Even though this is a writing question, question five, before you start writing, it is really important that you think about what you have just read in the extract. So that's my first top tip for you. Think about what you've read in the extract. Can you magpie? any methods or techniques the writer has used? Does it help you with your own creativity, your own ideas? Is there something structurally like a flashback or cyclical structure that you think that you could use in your own writing? So AQA tell us that in order um, to do the writing section, the reading should inform your writing. So that's why we always say as teachers, have a look at the extract, have a look if there's anything that you can, magpie, vocabulary, structure, language devices, and then that should inform your own writing. The reading part should help you when you come to do your own writing, okay? So just to recap, question five is worth 40 marks. You should be spending 45 to 50 minutes on this question, a minimum of 45, because remember it's worth 50% of your overall marks. If you do get extra time, you may want to spend some more time on this question. Um, and I would advise you if you do get extra time to spend the time on this question, because like I said, it's 40 marks and it's worth 50% of your GCSE English language paper one. You could be asked to write a story, which we say a narrative, or a description. You may also get one option. So just to um, make you aware that sometimes it says to both write a story, okay? The description is not there. However, th there will be an image there. But that is absolutely fine because a description and a narrative both focus on the same skills. It's the exact same mark scheme. And an examiner, and I know this myself from marking, will always mark you for what is there rather than what isn't, okay? So it doesn't matter if there is two stories or two descriptions, the examiner is looking for the same skills. Some top tips for you, suggested by this picture, equals use your imagination. Now, we want you to be creative and we want you to use your imagination, but we also want you to be realistic. We also want you to be able to write about something that sounds interesting, engaging, and perhaps you've watched it on television, it's a series on Netflix that you've got some inspiration from, but we don't want it to be a cliche. So we don't want it to be, suddenly I woke up and it was all a dream or it ends with an ellipsis, dot, dot, dot. We don't want it to be that you was kidnapped, that you were, there was aliens, or anything that doesn't sound realistic, or doesn't sound like a Key Stage 4 pupil has written this task. Planning is absolutely crucial. The plan, the more you plan, the, the better your overall grade, you will write less and you will write better. And we'll be looking at plans and what plans we use in today's session. Proofreading, don't forget the basics. That is really, really vital. Level three on the mark scheme says, has the candidate written for the correct text type, audience and purpose? And is it coherent? Coherent basically means 
does it make sense? So it's really important that you are writing in paragraphs. You will be capped and not be able to get into level four if you don't write in paragraphs. But think about the basics, the things that you were taught very on early in English or literacy back in primary school, spelling, punctuation and grammar. They're all very important skills, basic skills that you should be using when you come to attempt question five, the writing question. OK, so following on from our lovely bones extract and questions, the lovely bones exam says write a description based on this picture or write a story about a time when you felt scared. OK, so this image is very interesting because this image links to the text. So if you've read the text correctly, you will know that Susie described this image that you have in front of you when she was walking home. And she bumped in to, is it her murderer? Is it not her murderer? Who knows? Another narrative, right, story about a time when you felt scared. Obviously, when we look at Susie in the extract and her character, we read and infer from that that she was quite scared and frightened by her encounter with her neighbour because she didn't know he was there. She'd never told him her name, etc. So again, this is why it's important to read the extract because that will give you kind of get your imagination and your creative um, skills flowing and ideas. The best advice that I could give you is, and I, this is entirely up to you, I prefer the description. Now, the description, it says suggested by this picture or based on this picture, and I just feel like the description in 45 minutes is much more accessible than writing a story. So if we think about the differences between a description and a story, a description is in that moment in time. There's no beginning, middle, end, climax. We don't have to introduce characters or dialogue, anything like that. A narrative needs all them things. So for me personally, and this is just my opinion, I would always go for the description. And we will look at how I would plan for the description later in this session. So just to go over the mark scheme, the question five, you are marked for content and organisation and given a mark out of 24. And you are also given a mark for your skills, your spelling, punctuation and grammar. And that is a mark out of 16. When they are marking for content and organisation, like I said at the beginning, it's all about is it matched to the correct purpose? So if you are writing your description based on this image, is the image of winter time, snow, frozen, an isolated, abandoned um, cornfield, or have you just completely missed it and gone and off and described um, a hot summer's day? It's that simple. You have impressive vocabulary. We know the snow is white, okay? We know the snow is soft. Can you include some impressive vocabulary to describe that snow? Language techniques, structural techniques, engaging with connected ideas. So you're using sentence types. So when you look at the description, you might zoom in to the trees over here and then do a wide angle. And then you might zoom out to the clouds or the sun that's setting in the distance. That's all connected ideas and to get them connected ideas you should always be writing in paragraphs over here on your skills you're giving 60 marks and you are asked to include a range of accurate punctuation one rhetorical question one exclamatory sentence a full stop and a comma is not going to get you a grade five. Think about all the punctuation that you can use. Um, things that are really underrated as punctuation goes and easy to use. Dashes, brackets, 
Um, ellipsis do not have to go at the end of a paragraph. They can go in between sentences. And if you're aiming for higher grades like sixes, sevens and eights, I would highly, highly advise you to focus on ellipsis in the middle of a sentence to really start adding the tension um, and creating some mood and atmosphere in your writing. Range of sentence forms. So your standard ones are you like simple, compound, complex, um, but then adding some like minor sentences, one word sentences, um, adding in exclamatory, declarative, imperative, all different sentence forms will help you when you are coming to get the best possible grade for your writing question. Standard English, so we don't want to see any swear words or any slang. So you're not writing a text message or replying to your friends on social media. Spelling and vocabulary. Now, a course that I went on with AQA said that they would rather students try and include impressive vocabulary and get the spelling wrong than not um, include that word. So do, if you know an impressive word, but you're unsure whether it's got an E on the end or it's got two S's or one S's, try, just put it in because the examiner is going to see that you have been using and trying to use um, interesting vocabulary for an effect. Okay, so descriptive and narrative. Now, you may have your own preference. You may say, oh, I don't know why Miss is saying use the descriptive, I love the narrative, and that's absolutely fine. Um, just have a look now at the differences between descriptive and narrative. So descriptive is not a story, okay? There should be no time traveling in that story because no one's been introduced. There's not gonna be another setting or another character. A description is in that moment. Imagine you walk into your room you walk into your house, your front door, or you walk into the gates of Stretford High School, describe what is around you, describe what you can hear, taste, touch, smell. That is a description. In a descriptive writing task, you will use soap maps. You will include a variety of different sentence types, and you will use the show, don't tell in order to making obvious statements, you want to give clues to the reader and focus on small areas of detail and develop your description. So remember, when you are reading the extract in your exam and you are trying to infer and think about things and why the writer has chosen that word instead of that word, that's exactly what you are doing in your own writing. Instead of using the word closed, you might use the word slam. What's the connotations and the difference between that? Why did you choose that um, word over the different word? A narrative, okay? So you're writing a story from, it doesn't always have to be first person. It can be first or third. It can be second, but I've not seen many people do second um, perspective, which is you, okay? First is all I. Third is he and she. You give details of an experience. You're taking the reader on a journey. And this is what I find difficult within 45 minutes to do. You're going to write in a chronological order. You're going to include action, activity. You're going to do the same skills using soap maps, sentence lengths and types. And you are going to use features of story writing, such as setting and dramatic climax. OK, so you can already see by the screen the difference between descriptive and narrative. And that narrative question is just asking you to do that little bit more, um, which you might feel like you're confident with and you're a great um, writer, fiction writer, then go for the narrative. My advice would be get a great plan in there and go for the descriptive. So an example of what a question would look like on your GCSE paper. So in your mock, when you come back in March, um, is write description suggested by this picture or write the opening part of a story about a person or place that is old. So if you're doing the description, 
you're going to focus on the task, the description, and you are going to center your response around the picture. Okay, do not go off on a tangent. So try not introduce suddenly a fox came over here or suddenly um, there was a man walking towards you going off into a story if you do that. So try and just focus on the image. I tend to tell my class to kind of imagine you've just dropped someone in the middle. Okay, you've just dropped yourself in the middle of that field and describe now using your senses. That simple. The story, it says here, opening part of a story. So you don't have to write a complete story, but because it's asking you to write about a story that is old, a person or place that is old, you need to make sure that it's engaging, it's exciting. It can't just suddenly end and the examiner is questioning, did you have time to finish it? Is that done? The examiner should read your work and then be thinking, right, that was excellent. That's definitely in band four, that for band five, etc. Okay, so please make sure, even if it says the opening or even it says the end, that your story looks and feels like it is complete. So I'm going to spend the next part of the session just going through the skills and what you should be focusing on when you approach your question five so i want by the end of this session i want you to keep this task from the lovely bones in the back of your head as we go through each of the next skills and the slides together so at the end i'd like you um, as your revision to go away and complete one of these tasks okay so what would we need to include in them tasks in that task so before i mentioned to you some writing techniques here in front of you are all the fiction techniques that we as teachers would recommend that you use remember fiction writing is different than non-fiction so in non-fiction we use the acronym de forester because we're writing for a specific purpose to persuade to argue to advise to inform whereas in descriptive writing we're trying to get the reader to imagine imagine something that we have created that we've used our imagination and created so adventurous adjectives, similes, metaphors, pathetic fallacy, personification, onomatopoeia, harsh verbs, extended noun phrases, alliteration, your senses, oxymoron and hyperbole. I mean, there is more that you could use, but they would be the minimum we would expect you to be using in your writing. Now, as a little bit of a progress check, you might want to pause this recording and you might want to write these down or write the ones down that you perhaps don't know what they are, can't give me an example of or can't define because then that's your revision. Go away, have a look on Google. There's loads of examples of metaphors and similes. Okay, I mentioned this acronym before. This might be a great revision technique for you to focus on. Soap maps, um, it's just like what we would say with De Forrester, it's just easy to remember. So, soap maps stands for the following simile, onomatopoeia, alliteration, personification, metaphors, adverbs, prophetic fallacy, and senses. So, if I was personally taking the mock exam in March, I would have that in the back of my head when I approach question five. So soap maps at the top, sentence types, paragraphs, spag, vocabulary, just a note to myself that I need to include that when I am planning. Ambitious vocabulary is a really important one. If we go back to the mark scheme, you can see you are marked for it in content and also in your skills for spelling, punctuation and grammar. So think of really easy words like old, new, bad, sad, angry, happy. And instead of using them, think of other words that you could use. So in front of you on this slide, I've got two examples. Someone who is organised can become 
careful, usual behaviour, punctual or neat. Um, if you are meticulous, it means you have an obsession, controlling, repetitive. So these would be words that would be classed as impressive vocabulary. And that's what we will be trying to include in the writing task um, for question five. Other skills, it's not just all about language. We've got to think about structure as well for question five. So I've spent quite a bit of time looking at language, but structure is just as important. Structure, especially if you are aiming for them higher grades. So we all know what dialogue is and we all know an opening. Opening should be really engaging and have the reader questioning what happens next, who is this, why do they feel that way, the acronym QUIF, what we use. So as soon as I read and I mark the first paragraph, I kind of know where they are in terms of the mark scheme. So I start questioning what's the atmosphere, what's the mood, what's the tone, okay? And the way that we do that with the opening is by using these language devices, but it really is about our sentence types, minor, compound, simple, complex. If you're giving the reader lots of information, you're gonna include lots and lots of complex sen sentences. If you create your mood and atmosphere, simple, short sentences, okay? Flashbacks. Really important if you're thinking about higher grades. Um, paragraph order and size, it takes two minutes to do a one line paragraph. That one line paragraph could even be a question. He thought he had been here before, had he? Dot, dot, dot. Um, sentence order, narrative perspective, action and climax, just basically how we put together our piece of writing. And that I would really advise you to focus on structure when you come to plan before you start your writing. Another really top tip is about showing the reader or the examiner rather than telling them. So if you think of the following, he was really tall, the town was deserted, he was a skyscraper, the town was lost and lonely. So we just change this really obvious um, he was funny, he was kind, he was strong. Anything that you're going to say that's obvious meaning, that is there, it's explicit, it's not implied. What we want to change is these explicit phrases for implicit, okay? So giving you some examples here, using them for character. So this would be for a narrative when you've got your character in there. We've got a brief version of Sally. So Sally is our character. Our imagine, we've used our imagination and come up with the character of, of Sally. She's disorganized, okay? And she's weak at writing. Sally, who worked in a newspaper office, was very disorganized. That tells the reader, that's explicit. A detailed version, this is shows the reader that Sally is disorganized. As she sat down at her desk, comma, Sally heaped a pile of letters and files onto the top of her in tray. She hunted for a biro she thought she'd seen earlier in the day. So this is effective because it doesn't tell us she's disorganized, but it also tells us she's disorganized, she's quite chaotic, She's quite untidy. So we've got some more insight into the character rather than this really basic telling sentence, okay? Have a look now at how we would use that show, showing, not telling, when we're talking about place. So this one is character. The next one is place. This tells the reader the street was covered in snow. When I woke in the morning, I saw my street was covered in snow. Very obvious. Detailed version. I emerged from beneath my duvet to see that my street was covered in a white glistening duvet of its very own. We can see straight away how that's going to get us the better marks and how that is going to get us um, into them grade sixes and sevens that we want to focus on. So first thing I would advise you to do when you come to think about the task is asking yourself questions. So look at the task, the description, the image in front of you, a time when you felt scared 
and ask yourself questions like what happened what was happening five minutes ago in this image what's going to happen in five minutes time who was there what time of day was it why was that person there okay if you're talking about the story and about when you felt scared start asking your question self questions about who is going to be my character where is my character now what's the backstory how old are they and um, what's their name etc that's how you open the imagination okay when you come to look at the picture really look at the picture in detail some um, examiners use line techniques so they ask their students to put lines through the picture and then describe each one of the sections that might be a helpful useful tip but the story about when you felt scared you're going to have to ask yourself questions about what what it feels like to be scared why would we be scared why would the um if you think about susie in the extracts why was she scared is there anything that we can magpie from the actual extracts okay so open your imagination by asking questions so from the examiner's report okay these are the tips that we got off the aqa the examiner report not last year because we didn't have exams but the year before a lack of planning resulted in unnecessarily lengthy responses where the more a student wrote the greater the deterioration in idea structure and accuracy so like i said at the start if you plan the better you write it's that simple the really you should be aiming and i know students get a lot um teachers get asked this loads of times is how much should i write now the best ones that i've marked the ones that have been like 40 out of 40 or 38 39 have been maximum two and a half to three sides it's not about quantity it's about quality many students would have benefited benefited from a quality rather than quantity approach having the confidence to take time to plan and then craft a shaped and structured response in two or three sides with time at the end to revise and improve to write less and craft it more would be useful advice for all we are looking for students to write reflective detailed descriptions rather than focusing on a complex plot students should use descriptive detail to create character or setting to make their writing engaging not tell a story okay so just to reiterate there planning planning is important and that's why we go on about it a lot as teachers now there are different ways for you to plan okay um, some people like to do mind map some people like to answer the questions um, with the task in the middle and then ask the questions around them some people like to zoom in and put um, little marks and mind map on the actual image and um, we've got this classic story um, graph here that you probably be familiar with from primary school um, and we've got some bullet points there are loads of different methods that you can use for planning but the main thing is the purpose of your plan it doesn't matter what your plan looks like or what your plan um, is if it's scribbles notes bullet points mind maps um, what it does it, it prepares you okay so think about the question and what you need to focus on carefully plan if you're doing the story a beginning middle and end focus um, on characters and exploring them through dialogue relationships actions and decisions if you are going for the description use of senses is really really and vitally important setting and weather don't be too constricted by too many words or complex imagery just use the words that you know and use them well okay so that for me is the base the basis of a good grade nine grade eight response planning preparation looking at the question asking yourself what i need to do what i'm going to focus on narrative or description thinking about all these skills that i need to include and making sure before i put my pen to that paper that i know exactly what 
I am going to write about. Okay, so I hope you found that useful. And if you do need any other information or help, I have on this PowerPoint put some um, advice from authors, GCSE Pod, and Mr. Brough that you can take away and revise and look at. What I would advise you to do now, key stage four, is to write the tasks down from the mock exam, the lovely bones. And I would advise you to spend five minutes planning for one of the tasks, the description or the narrative. And then I would give myself 50 minutes to write a paragraph, a two paragraphs, focusing on the mark scheme, all the things that we've looked at in today's session. A copy of this PowerPoint with the takeaway and a copy of the mock exam with the question on at all on your Google Classroom. And you can find them on GCSE language, English language, um, and they're accessible to both year 10 and year 11. If you have any if you have any questions or need my help or my support, please um, don't hesitate to email me. Um, it's Mrs. Wright, dwright at stratfordhigh.com. Thank you. Key stage four.